Artificial intelligence can be defined as a disruptive technology that's going to influence our daily lives in the near future as well as our job security. Now there's some interesting articles on the internet and I recommend that you go and search and read some of these that indicates how artificial intelligence will become part of our daily lives and how it will influence the way in which we perform our tasks. But let's continue and talk about what is artificial intelligence. Now AI can be defined as computer-based information systems, people, procedures, hardware, software, data and knowledge that we need to use in order to develop computer systems and machines that demonstrate the characteristics of intelligence. So these machines should be able to learn, reason and self-correct. So typically we would find that in especially newer smartphones, we've got something such as a Bixby assistant, where that assistant will look at your daily interactions with the device and it's going to learn your behaviors and then adopt according to that. Now in order for a system to be classified as intelligent, it needs to have intelligent behavior. And this gives us the following definition. Now, the nature of intelligence and intelligent behavior is perhaps one of the biggest definitions that you're going to encounter. And it includes the ability for devices to do the following. For example, to learn from experiences and to apply knowledge acquired from past experience, to handle complex situations, to solve problems when important information is missing, to determine what is important, to react quickly and correctly to new situations, to understand visual images, to process and manipulate symbols, to be creative and imaginative, and finally to use heuristics or rule of thumb. Now if we look at the visual images, that's also linked to a concept known as perceptive systems, which is an approximation of allowing devices or computers to interact similar to a person by seeing, hearing and feeling objects. Now let's just look at a few slides indicating each one of these intelligent behaviors. If we look at the following set of images, what's clearly wrong in the first image is that that particular person didn't learn from past experiences. So past experiences would indicate that he shouldn't use a ladder on stairs because it's very dangerous and you're going to injure yourself. If we look at the slide on the right hand side, Sudoku, which a lot of you might be familiar with, that is a nice example of where we have missing information. So you need to look at the basic information that you have and you need to try to solve and add additional information. The next image and slide indicates determining what is important and that's why we see the word being highlighted or placed in bold. The one on the right, reacting to quick situations. For example, as soon as you open the box, the spider jumps out and you react based on that. The next image indicates our capability of processing visual images. For example, if you look at this image, you can either see a magician or a girl's face or you might be lucky to see both. For example, the mag magician or the musician, sorry, there's the head, there's the saxophone, there's the body and the feet, and if we try to see the face, there's two eyes, a nose, a mouth, shadow on the side with a hairline. Alternatively, if we look at these images, our ability to process symbol, we would see that we've got three pictures, three signs, but none of the pictures actually relate to the text on the signs, which indicates it's a deer crossing, but we Notice that the first one indicates a rhino, second one an elephant, and the last one a camel. So again, people would have the ability to distinguish and see that something is wrong there. Now let's go and look at one of the devices that will actually aid us in natural, in the nature of intelligence or sharing our intelligence. Now this is actually known as either BCI or a brain computer interface. Now this is a device that you would put on your head that would connect the brain to a computer and that would allow the human to control the computer's activities through thought. For example, there's some nice videos available. If you go and search for emotive, 
that's a device that's already available in market where some international companies require that the employees wear the device this device has the ability to detect your brain waves whether you're happy or sad where you're watching and generally allow you to control your computer by just thinking of the actions now it's important to realize that there is a difference between natural and artificial intelligence for example if we look at most of the aspects that was covered in natural intelligence and we compare it to artificial intelligence typically your machines we would find that the use of senses in the form of seeing hearing touching and smelling com um, humans are very good with that and computers are currently struggling with that being creative and imaginative again humans are good computers are bad learning from past experiences people are good computers struggle with that adapting to new situations people are good computers struggle affording the cost of acquiring intelligence again for humans it's high and computers it's low acquiring a large amount of information and this is where we typically find that computers are starting to perform better so working with large amounts of information people generally at this stage still perform high but computers are also performing very well working with a variety of information sources people are good with that computers are also good and this is where we start to go down making complex calculations people struggle there with that whereas computers generally perform very good with it transferring knowledge we are bad with it computers are excellent and then making a series of calculations rapidly and accurately human beings struggle with that and computers are generally very good with it so we're starting to see that computers are trying to look at the abilities that they struggle with and they're trying to improve that into in order to be more human-like now let's look at some of the subsystems that we typically find in artificial intelligence and each one of these will be covered in more detail in the next few slides so we're going to start off with expert systems and then move to vision robotics natural language processing learning systems neural networks and then various other subsystems but let's start by looking at expert systems expert systems are typically hardware and software that stores knowledge and that makes inferences similar to what a human expert would be able to do so we're going to look at this in more detail by looking at the components of expert systems and how these can be used but before we do that let's look at some other subsystems the first one being robotics robots are typically mechanical or computer devices that perform tasks that require a high degree of accuracy or that should typically be used in situations where it might be hazardous for humans or it would become very tedious for example we find it in manufacturing where they work 24 7 360 days a year doing the same processes without complaining ensuring high quality we also might find it in situations where we need to send in soldiers or detect bombs we find that it's already available in surgery for example if you have a specialist in America and they can't come here there are some systems robotics available where they can operate from America and the robot on the side would operate on their behalf and then it also allows us to go to various inaccessible areas for example we know about the Mars rover which was sent to Mars because it's not conducive for human interaction now robotics has actually progressed quite a lot and we're starting to see that with the latest robot known as Sophia again go and search for that video clip that allows the robot to simulate the human beings behaviors and interactions by trying to be more human like for example blinking using gestures and to speak and we also find that micro robotics are gaining a lot of ground where it's already possible for you to swallow a small capsule which would go through your whole system and as it goes through it would take various readings photographs videos and then doctors can actually go and analyze these things the next system includes vision systems 
Now this system again is hardware and software that would allow us to capture, store and manipulate visual images. And again there's a lot of examples that we find this in. Mainly in factories where they need to ensure quality, where you've got a camera and as products pass underneath the camera it will actually look at the quality of the product and if it's deemed not to be of good quality it would be discarded. Now robots are also progressing in this area where they now can have visual inputs, they can identify people and then based on the person they can adjust their behaviors for that particular person. Now where did vision systems originally start? Originally it was mainly to recognize black and white and perhaps a little variation of gray images. Traditionally these systems struggled with color, they struggled with detecting 3D images, that has changed in the meantime. And we do find some of these systems in the form of fingerprint recognition, retina recognition as well as facial recognition, which nowadays has become sta standard for logging processes. For example, in the UK they make use of vision systems to um, track and trace soccer hooligans. So if their soccer matches and a person isn't allowed to go to a stadium, as they're using the public transport or driving their cars, the system will continuously monitor and track them. And before they get to a st the stadiums, they will actually be stopped and prevented from entering. The next system include natural language processing and voice recognition. Now this allows us to go or allows the computer to understand and react to statements and commands that's typically made in a natural language such as English. For example, you would speak to a computer, the computer would analyze the sounds, compare it to a voice note and then that would be linked to an action. It's already possible for you to control various devices, smartphones with your voice where you can speak to the device and it would recognize and try to find out what you want to do. The next system is learning systems. Now this is a combination of software and hardware that allows the computer to change how it functions or reacts to situations based on feedback that it receives. For example, we typically find it in games where if you play a game, the system can go and try to detect your patterns and trends and adjust itself based on that to try and outmaneuver you. We also find that for various systems we can actually create a small robot, set the robot to explore a, uh, a venue or a facility and then learn based on its interactions with that environment. The next system is known as neural networks. Now neural networks is a system that tries to simulate the functioning of a human brain. And in order to do that it tries to process a lot of information simultaneously and it also tries to recognize various patterns. So we would find that it tries to discover relationships and trends in perhaps large databases and then ultimately it would try to go and solve complex problems. The last two components that we need to talk or refer to is actually known as the genetic algorithm as well as the intelligent agent. Now, a genetic algorithm is an approach to solve large complex problems in which a number of operations and models change until it finds the best possible model or solution. Now, again, we find examples in banking investment firms where they would perhaps go and try to find the best stock combination to make the most profits. Alternatively, we find it in computer science and maths as well as in perhaps order selection. So what combination of orders would be most appropriate for our company to ensure that we have the best profits? An intelligent agent on the other hand can be defined as a program that uses a knowledge base to perform specific tasks for a person, a process or any other program and it can also be defined as an intelligent robot or bot. Now what it actually comes down to, it's a small piece of software that performs actions on your behalf. For example, if we think in terms of sports agents, instead of a sport agent looking for new talent, um, athletes, 
we can have an intelligent agent that would go on the internet, look at video clips, look at um, results, um, perhaps popularity of people, and thereby identifying possible athletes that should be approached or that should perhaps be invested in. In our next section, we're going to talk about expert systems.